Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we are going to talk about missiles. I love missiles. Or rockets. Stay tuned. So, I love rockets. Rockets is what got me into 3D printing. It's what made me interested in 3D printing. Specifically, doing that, this. Making nose cones. This is what I bought a 3D printer for, to make parts for my rockets. Because as you get bigger, these parts get a lot more expensive. But with 3D printing, they're dirt cheap. Like To buy a nose cone like this would probably be Oh, I want to say 15 to 20 bucks, maybe 10 if you got a, a cast off, but um, printing this, about a dollar, and I can customize it any way I want. So, of course, one of my standardized test prints is rockets. This is the Vern style rocket. It's one of my three test prints. I do a Marvin, a Benchy, and a Vern style rocket. Or if I'm not in the mood for a Vern style rocket, I do a classic rocket. And of course, I got that new filamentum. I finally got that vertical gray and vertical galaxy filaments. So I, of course, did Vern styles in both of those. And I realized, oh, wait a minute. I got to upscale this stuff. Oh, man. So here is the vertical galaxy. Look at that shimmer. These are all on the ender, too. And vertical gray. And then, you guys already saw the video with this, I found this online by a user named MechaG, links will be down below, and he made something absolutely amazing. He made this bunch of parts. These are all different parts inside here, there's even more parts. These are all parts, these are all thread and bayonet together, and when you put them together, all that was printed on the Ender 2 by the way, except for the legs, that was only A5. You ended up with this, the Mars Lander. This is actually made to fly. So there will be a paper tube installed up the middle. There is a hole here for the launch rod. This comes off for attaching your parachutes to, and a motor will go here. So this will actually fly. So at some point, you guys will see pictures and video of this flying. Well, he had other rockets. You got, I already did a video on that one. So I had to print all of them. <laughs> okay. So the first up was the Nike Smoke. So when this is done, it'll have some decals on it. One of these will be orange and the rest will be yellow. It's a sounding rocket. So this is a copy of an SD's kit called the Nike Smoke. And then his favorite kit, and the next one I printed, was the Sentinel. He had to downscale his a little bit because of the size of his printer, but because I'm using a CR-10, I was able to return it to full-size scale. And this is a sport flying rocket called the Sentinel. It barely fits in the frame. There we go. So these are all parts that come together. So this is all one part. This is one part. This is one part. And the nose cone is two parts. So I could probably print this all as one part, but I might as well keep it as separate parts because you get that nice, clean finish when you don't go too tall. I printed all these on the bed all at once. So it printed all this together. Um, this upside down, of course. And it took 30 hours for each of these to print, roughly 30 hours. So all the parts in 30 hours done in one shot. So that's your Sentinel. That will also fly. All these will fly. Then next up is the Ares. I believe, I, be, I want to say this is an ICBM. I think, it was an, I think it was an ICBM. So this one's got a, a small issue where the more complicated base down here, he put a lot of engineering into it, but the result of that engineering is that it's way, way heavier than it needs to be. And that's exactly where you don't want the weight, so he graciously agreed that he would modify this for me to gut it out, get rid of all this stuff inside of here so this would be lighter, because this is not a display model to me. These are going to fly. I'm going to make kits out of these, and these are going to fly under rocket power. And these are very cool. This, the, the engineering that he puts into these models is simply staggering. He does such a nice job on this. The way these parts all thread together, bayonet style like that, it's just amazing that the, the skill necessary in the software to do that and have all these parts line up like that. That is impressive. And then one last one is the A4V2. This is the bumper whack variety. 
This is based off the Germans V2 rocket. Our very first rockets were based off the German V2s that we captured and the scientists that we brought back with us. So the this is basically a V2 rocket, the like the rockets that came down in the UK and England. Now this is what's called a boosted dart. Now this is all one piece. This is not actually separate. I'm actually going to ask him if he can make this separate because I think that'd be cool. The way this was working is they can only get so much altitude back then because we haven't figured out rockets quite yet. So to get a little higher, you have what's called a boosted dart. Now once the rocket's moving, it has inertia that'll keep it moving. And that's countered by its mass and its drag. So if I can keep the mass to drag ratio high, meaning lots of mass but very low drag, I can go higher on the same amount of input of energy. So the way this would work in real life is that this would boost up. And when it began to slow down, when the motor, right before or right after the motor would burn out, I don't remember exactly when, so don't quote me on that, this dart would separate. And because this dart had a lot less drag, it would continue up higher than this whole combo could get on its own. So it was a boosted dart. And that's pretty cool. This is beautiful. These models are truly stunning. I'll have links to all of them down below, so if you want to dabble with this kind of stuff. None of these are flight ready out of the box. You'll have to do modeling stuff to make them flight ready. So for example, on this particular model here, what you will need is a tube that will fit inside of here. And then you will need centering rings to center that tube inside of this model. And that tube you're going to want to come up to probably about here. And then you're going to want to coat the inside of this tube with another paper tube. Just take, you know, heck, you can even take cardstock and just line the inside of this. Just enough to protect it from the ejection gases. And that's it. When you do that, you attach a shock cord to this. So in here, there's a little eye hook. You would attach a shock cord to that. But basically a piece of Kevlar and a piece of elastic so that when the ejection charge of the engine fired, pushing this nose cone off the rocket violently, you don't want it to come to a hard stop because it'll tear components. And you also don't want it bouncing back and smacking into the rocket. We call that an Estes dent. <laughs> you can ask me in the comments what that means if you're interested. But um, you don't want this coming back. So a combination of Kevlar and elastic that's nice and long, and you'd have a parachute attached to this. The ejection charge would fire the nose cone off, push the parachute out, rocket would recover, you would change your engine to a new engine, and you could fly it again over and over and over again. These are beautiful. He even has little scale detail details like these. This is the thrust vectoring veins. So on the real rocket, these veins would protrude into the exhaust gas of the rocket motor to give you control, steering ability to guide the rocket to make it go where you want it to go to keep it going straight up. But this stuff is cool. I also plan to work on making these into a flying rocket as well. With Actually, I think I could do it with this size right here with a 13 millimeter motor and a little bit of nose weight. I believe that could fly as it is. That's it. You guys have a great day. I hope you've enjoyed my little bit of rocketry and 3D printing. There will, of course, be more to come. I keep forgetting something. This has nothing to do with this video, but it's getting added to this video because I keep forgetting to add it to the queue of stuff that I'm doing a video on. And I printed it like like a, almost a month ago. <laughs> but it was one of those things we had, I remember you guys said the one guy got it. He got his roll of filament, by the way. I sent it to him. He was the only person to guess what both of the mystery printed objects were. The one was the faceted tree, but nobody got the other one except for him. It was a sleepy cat at the zoo. <laughs> I guess someone took pictures and modeled it of a cat asleep sitting up like this at a local zoo. And this was printed in uh, Isan Pile Pro Brown on the TiVo Tornado. But I just had to get that out there because I keep forgetting to add this to a video. So my kitty cat can sleep with the rockets. <laughs> you guys have a great night.